I think we're live. So we are here in Temazula, Temazula, however it's pronounced. Um, the game wants us to go this way all the way around, but there's actually a uh, hidden road between these two points here across this canyon. We got to go all the way down here and then back up this way to get to it. This is a pretty cool site. There's like a bridge construction deal going on here from the two different sides. And you can make deliveries over on that side as well. So I've got the uh, that tank cargo and some blocks on the truck. That's the wrong button. So it's actually quite a long drive to cover all that. I tried it out yesterday and uh, I drove just during the daytime. Um, I just, you know, advanced time when it got dark and it took me two, two consecutive days to cover the whole thing, basically. driving above this tunnel on our way back this direction. I'm using a uh, different engine for once. I don't know what that was about. Um, this is the Mac Maxi Cruise out of the, the Anthem mod. Something a little more subdued sounding. I, for just kind of a regular engine sound, I think it's kind of the best. And the Jake I've got, I took that from the Harvin W990 mod. From the, I think it's the Cummins ISX. I think it sounds pretty good. Something more civilized than the loud N14 I run all the time. I'm going to hit up the, uh, the shop when I reach it and I'm going to change out the gears in this truck. I made another transmission that has uh, 456 rear end gears, which is really nice in the, the mountains. I think the, the deepest that comes with this truck is 430 gears, which aren't bad, but And we're also traveling over that road that we'll be on down there as well.
for a while I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get any flatbed cargo with my uh, my flatbed that I got here or any uh, tanker cargo with my four axle tanker trailer. That's because I have those restricted to just four states and the Mexican states obviously weren't one of any of the states I had in there so I had to go back and add those and then I could get cargo. swapped. Check here, and yeah, this is where we want to turn. since we're going off-road. Yeah, this is the, the 605 horsepower version of the the Mac Maxi Cruise. I'm gonna stop at the top here and lock in my diffs. Here it's slipping a little. Probably uh, should have fueled up back there, huh? This could end poorly. I don't think there's any fuel stops <laughs> anymore. Not a water crossing.
just can't really see it, but we just passed under the the bridge that we drove over on the way here. Lock diffs made me want to go straight there. I haven't tried any of these super tight roads with a semi yet, but I suspect it's just going to be a pain in the ass. Yeah, and this is, uh, I can't believe I nailed those shifts like that. Um, and I screwed that one up. This is the, uh, this side is much less steep than when we go back up on the side we're heading to. I found a uh, pretty cool hydroelectric dam that's modeled in here as well that's not too far from here. I haven't done any driving over there yet, I just found it with the free camera. I imagine it's probably faster just to go the route that it wants you to take. Even though as the crow flies, this is way shorter. I gotta check the collision boxes on the trailer and see what's going on. Yeah, this has totally scratched my itch that I had to use
use the Dalton Highway mod. It no longer works. I think this is actually more fun, even though it's not one to one. The grades are just as good. Well, I got second anyways. Too slow though. Love dynamic grinding sounds. Uh, looks like we got a chat here. I miss the Dalton just for the realness. What map is the Mexico Extreme? Um, I don't know exactly what I mean. It's just Mexico Extreme mode by Team Reforma. It's pretty easy to find. It's, it's just an add-on for the base map. It's not connected to the base map. Um, I just teleport here to use it. I think the coast-to-coast -coast map, um, the you know the coast to coast add-on I believe it integrates with this and then you can drive to it um, I'm not positive on that but thanks for watching That's definitely it. Yeah, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the map, but um, I don't know if you know about any of the secret routes or the you know the hidden routes. But I'm going between these two points here on a hidden road. Um, there's another one between these two points as well. So that's what I'm doing today. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Dalton comes back. Man, this is steep. Gotta be careful here, there was a weird collision going on when I came the other way yesterday, so I'm gonna hang out to this side and hopefully avoid that. Yeah, we're traveling over that tunnel. And that construction site we came from is right down there somewhere. take that off the spacebar. It's only the easiest button on the keyboard to hit. Hey, thanks simulator. It's pretty much these trucks that I, these setups that I did made are about the only thing I drive anymore. Um, I like this combination so much. But lately I have been, I did make a, let me get my Jake on here. I finally made another heavy haul tractor out of the 3XX. 
and I've been doing some of the the heavy haul cargos again, which is a lot of fun on this map. Um, you're not going to take any of those trailers on these roads, though, for sure. Thanks, Newall. Newall? Newall? However you pronounce it. Yeah, I've got a few updates I'm kind of working on. I've just been kind of... haven't been too eager to put them out yet, but... Um, the logging one I've been showing a little bit around Facebook. The uh, got the lights all on the headache rack. Um, changed up the the fenders for the lift axle. And then uh, added some lights to the the mud flaps on the trailer, as well as the truck on the fenders on the truck or light slots I should say see those are optional new all got it Yeah, I run the this supposed UK CB because it has the the mic mounted on the other side. Just because the the cord isn't quite so ridiculously floppy as the normal one. Um, I'm no I've I've tried to edit the uh, the animations, but I don't know what I'm doing yet to to make it better. So I just choose this one instead. Do I have a link to the Facebook site? Um, it's uh, not right at the moment, but it's just the Half-Assed Gaming Community um, page on Facebook. Just join the group. Find all sorts of stuff there that people are doing and stuff that Jeff shows that he's working on with the, the truck. Almost to the end of the mapped portion of this road. It's taken us almost seven hours game time just to get here. Which is ridiculous. Kind of wish you could. Like, well, maybe there is a way to slow time down. I think it slows down everything though. Because when you're driving stuff like this, it's basically one to one scale. The time needs to slow down. Because this, this load's going to be late no matter what. Probably won't get paid for it, but I don't really care. Correct. Half fast gaming. Yeah, that's, that's typically what I do, is I just, I don't run the the fatigue simulation, I just use the console to advance time whenever I need to. Typically just do it at night, because I don't really feel like driving at night most times.
should probably bring up my OBS software and see if I'm dropping any frames or anything. Just a moment. Carefully. I'm going to scroll up the YouTube window as well so I can see the comments better now that they're at the bottom. And Cool. It doesn't look like I've dropped any frames, so that's good. Yeah, I'll probably have a, an update out sometime in the next couple few days. And of course, I have the, the link in the description that goes to the, the place on the SCS forums where I also post about it a little bit. Yes, I run, uh, I keep the synchronizers enabled, um, so if I do have to use the clutch, like in a situation where I've really screwed up, I can, but I do run advanced shifting, so I don't use the clutch 99% of the time, so you'll hear me grind and stuff every once in a while, or quite a bit, especially downshifts, those are a lot harder to get. But sometimes nail them perfect, you know. To me, it's the only way to drive. For a while, when I first started with the game, I used a sound mod that actually turned the grinding sound off. I don't know if that helped me get better or not, but it was nice just to shift and not hear it grind all the time. And as I got better, I just keep it on and now it kind of lets you know when you when you screwed up but which is nice to know as well yeah I've got a an Eaton shift mod I've got the Thrustmaster TH8A shifter with the Eaton um, shift knob on top of it that I wired up before if anyone even was selling them. Couldn't go back to using separate buttons for the splitter and range. It's kind of tedious. This is just so natural. Yeah, it's real, especially these hills, they just kick your ass sometimes with trying to catch a gear and then you you slightly over rev and then the revs don't fall fast enough to fall with your speed to actually catch the gear so you're trying to go to another gear low enough or lower than that to try and catch it I found Really, when, when it's really steep, you just want to drop whole gears rather than try and do half a gear. It's you're more likely to miss it that way, and you'll probably need that whole gear anyways to pull the hill.
should probably set up a garage in Mexico and get some Mexican plates on this truck. Even though I have a Washington Trucking Company skin on it. Yeah, the thing I was doing today for the mod was, uh, I haven't even driven with it yet, I just got it in game, but I took the the dolly for the quad tanker and put a toolbox in the dolly, which is really common with those, along with some traffic cones that hang out on the dolly as well that the driver uses when they deliver. Not sure if I'm gonna like it, but it looks good so far. Yeah, it seems like all those shift knob companies kind of bit the dust. Does anyone make an Eaton anymore? It looks like they're all like European style now. I see quite a few of those on eBay. One of the reasons I did mine myself is I wanted it wired directly to my shifter. I had it wired to the buttons within the the G27 shifter, so it was all self-contained. And once I got the, the Thrustmaster shifter, I had to make it a standalone deal with a little Arduino board that plugs in. And it, it truthfully, it, it works better like that. It's just one more USB you have to plug in now. Yeah, that's good to know. Thanks, Newell. New, sorry, Newell. Yeah, so Southern Trucker on Facebook apparently makes Eaton style shifters still for anyone that watches this later and hasn't been paying attention to the chat. Can you imagine this route with a semi? Even like a 45 foot trailer would probably be a huge pain in the ass. I kind of want to try it just because. Yeah, and we're, I don't even think we're halfway there. It's so long. Yeah, we're getting to the bottom here. At some point I'm just going to stop and advance the time because it's going to be dark and no one wants to drive in this crap in the dark. Yeah, the, these shifters aren't too hard to make yourself. Um, the way to do it, and I think the way that everyone else the companies do it that make it is to use what's called a reed switch. A reed switch is a little um, set of contacts usually encased in glass and then sometimes they're also encased in plastic on top of that to make it more durable like the ones I used. But that's just a little set of contacts that almost touch each other and then when you get a magnet near them they, the contacts close. Um, so basically you put a couple of those inside the shifter with a couple of magnets that activates when you hit the, the little flippers and then you gotta of course wire it up to some sort of input board. I found the Arduino Teensy boards they're called are the easiest for doing joystick type inputs into a computer. The code's pretty simple to get set up. Now the climb really starts. Full gear there. Another 
full gear into third. Yeah, I haven't gone this way um, on this road yet. I've only come down this hill. AM, AMS Stu or AM Studio on YouTube has some good DIY videos, apparently. I assume that's for the shifter thing. I've been curious if anyone else has actually made their own. I've seen, you know, like kind of totally uh, custom setups where like where people just mount, you know, switches onto their shifter and not actually sh make a shift knob work. Holy shit, that's tight. Yeah, I've got the the uh, Sierra Nevada mod that Team Reformer also did, and actually I put in a few hours on that, and then I have I had it on good authority that their Mexico map was good, so I picked it up and I haven't touched the Sierra Nevada since. Even though Sierra Nevada is really nice, I should get back there. I'm just not a fan of the running California spec trucks that much. I like more axles, like what I got going on here that and uh, I want to I want to run more logging in the Sierra Nevadas and there's only one one uh, log landing there to take logs from that they've added I hope they add more a few here in the northern slash western part of Mexico, I guess it is, on this map for logging. How are we doing on fuel? Not horrible, I think we'll be okay, considering we're halfway there, and we've used less than half of the fuel that we had when we started. Oh, we're gonna get some rain. I don't know what the hell I'm doing to damage the trailer. I should probably investigate the collision boxes and see what's going on. Rain sure dropped my frame rate down.
like to take a log truck on this, but there's no no routes um, for hauling logs that it would, or there's no uh, origin or destination for hauling logs that would use this route. So. advance the time to uh, 5 a.m. and we can get going again. bump here. Guess there's no actual collision there. trick I found that helps out with this map is the interior camera. There's a uh, parameter called far plane, far underscore plane, and that sets how far away things appear on the interior camera, basically the, your draw distance, and it default is 1600 meters. Um, and I set it to, I added a thousand meters to it, so a lot of these mountains in the distance don't pop out of view anymore when you're in the interior camera anyways. Exterior they still will, I don't know where you where you change that, but I should probably look into that. Uh, am I gonna make this for ETS2 as well? Well, um, I think that would depend on Jeff making the Project 3XX for ETS2 and I don't believe he has any plans to do that. It might work in ETS2, I have no idea. Um, I picked up ETS2 recently. I haven't played it very much. Um, put a few hours into it. I'm just not into European trucking that much. I do like that they have, they call them tandems, or it's, it's called truck and trailer here, but it's basically the same setup over there. So there's few mods for those which are fun. I did I did download a German map that's one to one scale. This is kind of this this metro region area. I think it's called like Heilborn, something like that. Um, I should put more time into that. That was a lot of fun. Got ourselves a nice beautiful sunrise. Kind of want to stop it. Get a screenshot of that if you'll indulge me for a minute.
Ah, simulator says Heil Braun. I don't even know if that's the correct pronunciation, but not born, but Braun. Which, yeah, I remember that now. And Utopia is fun too. One to one. I think I, I think I have heard of that one. I know there's been a few people working on ATS maps that are one to one, like just mostly small kind of regions, which I think would be fun. But no one's ever actually put anything out except the Dalton. We are almost there. Well, almost back onto the established roads anyways. Then we're going to go through the uh, cartel checkpoints. There's three or four of them on the way back to the main highway. Get fleeced for 25 bucks at each one of those. Get some fuel pretty quick. I know there's a fuel station up here. And get our left axle down. Actually, I remember this is gravel for quite a ways still, or dirt, so I'll leave it up. I don't like that weird brake sound. I want to swap that out. That's just part of these Mac sounds that I'm using. Everything else is decent enough. Yeah, we got a pretty cool drive coming up out of here as well, kind of through this canyon. It's a ways down here. I'm going to turn my diff locks off and hopefully I can steer a little better. The ATS, the Columbia Real Map by Adrian Gogo, but it's a paid map. Half scale. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. I'll have to look into that. Thanks for the tip. I don't know, 750 sounds reasonable. I think the, the uh, Sierra Nevada add-on right now for early access beta is... Eight dollars or eight fifty or something like that donation. I give them. You know, I just throw them nine bucks. Plenty reasonable for me. There's another uh, kind of construction site up here. Got to be careful hauling out of there. I hauled a, uh, I think it was an asphalt grinding machine out of there. You know, with the Jeep and the and the booster, and just high centered the shit out of it coming up that hill. coming up here I think after we get fuel
there's also one spot right before we get back to the highway that looks like it has police cars parked there, but they they take a twenty-five dollar toll. So I don't know if it's if it's supposed to represent corrupt police as well. But everything else, I, I assume, is meant to be cartel. It's just regular vehicles parked, normal-looking people standing around. Just too bad they don't have uh, gun models in their hands. Hey, Jay. Thanks for watching. Some of the sketchiest parts of this journey are actually on the, the established map coming up here. I don't know what the hell keeps happening to my trailer. Let's do a quick investigation here. These are the collision boxes. Now this, oh, is that it? How the hell did that happen? This collision box in the back sticks way out. Right here. So this is a, a handy tool for diagnosing issues. It's just G underscore call box space one and then zero to turn it back off, but it lets you kind of see what the hell's going on. So that's dragging when I go around kind of drop-offs and stuff. Oh, wait here. Okay. Well, now I know I need to fix that for the next update. I swear it was fine at one point. I don't know what the hell I did. Oh, you know what? It was probably when I shortened the trailer to from 32 feet to 30 feet and I didn't touch the collision. It's easy to forget about the collision because it's off by default when you're in C mod anyways when you're working on stuff. I haven't taken it off road since I changed it like that. There's a big bump. That's gonna damage. Oh. Yeah, when you expect it to, it doesn't. Hey, welcome back, simulator. I think this is the most people I've had kind of watching for any decent length of time, so thanks guys.
not looking to build a huge following, but it'd be nice if people like watching me drive. And don't mind me yapping. I don't know. I don't really... When I watch ATS videos, it's normally people that have commentary with them. I'm not really into just watching the trucks drive by themselves. I kind of like hearing what people have to say, so... I don't know if that's how other people feel, but... Yeah, sure. Go ahead and send that link along and I'll, I'll check it out later. I imagine it's like the Dalton where you got to start a separate profile to use it. Sounds good simulator, that's cool with me. We got a water crossing down here. if I remember right. Yep. It's too bad there's no dynamic water effects that make the water crossings a lot more fun. Alright, lift axe is going down for a little while and I think we get back to dirt. Axle back up. Yeah, some of the spots in here are really sketchy as well with the low boy. We can we can dream about the the spin tires off road physics for sure. I like spin tires. I think the engine and transmission physics and or I don't know if you want to call them physics, but the simulation of them is awful in spin tires. That's about the, my biggest gripe with that game. Otherwise, I you know I quite like it. You know, I just realized I went off the path. I, I've been taking the dry riverbed when I should have been on the road there. The riverbed probably would have been easier with that low boy coming around that corner right there. It was awful. I 
And and I don't even think American Truck Simulator engine and transmission physics and especially the clutch are that good, but they blow away spin tires for sure. Spin tires does have really good force feedback, I'll give it that. More cartel, but you, there's no road if you go that way, it's blocked off. Yeah, and the, the BS, if you pull it out of gear with your foot on the floor, it makes the transmission, damages the transmission, it's, and, you know, stupid crap like that. And you can't start out in any other gear but first, so it just dies on you for no reason. It just really rubs me the wrong way with that game. probably just stick it in automatic and stop trying to enjoy that part of it. See, I think my diff lock is off. Yeah. I'll be shocked if we make this car go on time. Ah, no way. It says we have three hours. And the game is telling us we have 19 hours to reach our destination, which is totally off on this map for some reason. It's actually about half that, but still, we're going to go way over time on that. Uh, absolutely, Jay. Pay the cartel protection money. Does the stream look okay? Like see it so I'm not sure if it's actually running okay. It doesn't say I'm getting I haven't had any dropped frames so that's good. I am getting a warning saying encoding overload. Consider turning down and then the message is cut off. I've got a 1440 ultra wide monitor and I, I downscale it to 20, I think it's 2560 by 1080 for the stream, or for when I record anything really with OBS. Cool, thanks. Yeah, I just have a little preview of it, and it looks all choppy in my preview, so... Yeah, my upload here isn't the best. I've got pretty decent download. Um, limited to about, I wanna say, shit, seven, uh, six or seven megabit up. The down I get about 80, which is more than I pay for, which is good. So finally got cable last year finally ran it past my house. We've been stuck on DS DSL before that, and before we could get DSL we were stuck on satellite, which is awful. It's one downside of living out in the sticks. And we're not we're not even that far out. Yeah, it's just my, my preview screen for whatever reason is choppy. I don't know why. But that's all good. Alright, 
right, now we have to actually deal with traffic. SES needs to fix this bullshit. Yeah, I picked it up a uh, long time ago now. Coming up on three years, I've had it. Um, like it a lot. I wish it was a little bigger sometimes, but I mean, for what it is, they're a lot cheaper now than when I bought it. You can get them, I think, in the four, five hundred dollar range now. This was six fifty refurbished. Yeah, I had uh, I had triple 27 1080p monitors for a few years, um, and I decided to swap it out for the ultra wide. And I I prefer the ultra wide for a lot of reasons, but the triples were cool. I really hate Nvidia surround, which is one of the big reasons not to run triples. There's only one game that I had that would work without Nvidia surround with triples, and that was DCS World. Yeah, I know the feeling, Jay. We were on dial-up until 2009. Then we got satellite. Um, and then uh, we had satellite TV way before that, but not internet. Then we got satellite until 2012 when the phone company finally got their head out of their ass and said we could actually get DSL here. They had some, There was some sort of bad connection in the phone system and the, every time they would check if we could get DSL, it would say we couldn't, but once they fixed that, we could. But DSL was only about 7, seven megabit down at best. And base Comcast was 60, and they upgraded us to 75 this year for free. And I've always gotten more than I paid for, which is good. didn't hit that time. It hit last time I drove through there this way. Yeah, my parents moved out into the boonies a few years ago and they're back into satellite internet only. And it sucks. I mean, the speed isn't horrible. It beats dial up any day, but bandwidth sucks. I can never watch any videos or do anything because it'll eat up all their bandwidth. Uh, I'd kill for Google, Google Fiber. Actually, I mean, I don't even really need any more download than I got. I would love to have a good upload. I'd love to stream this at like twice the bitrate. It's about as best I can do for stream. There's those god awful speed bumps. I'm trying to remember what they call that when you have, I think a lot of the fiber internets, internet services have, I think it's called like parallel speed or something where you have the same download as you do upload, that would be nice. Probably pay ten bucks a month more if they could just 
double my upload. Oh yeah, that, that, that I forgot to mention that. That's a must-have mod. Um, it increases the distance of the signs for these construction zones. So they're actually like plenty reasonable down instead of like a hundred yards before the zone. I'm trying to remember what the hell it's called. I found it on the SES form. Any day now. seem like acceptable driving maneuvers in Mexico. Pretty much how it is, Jay. Can't stand that. Come around a corner, you got a sign, and then about two seconds to get on the brakes. Remember, I think someone was making an excuse somewhere. I don't remember where, but saying like, "Oh, there's no room. It's all the the map scale is too small to increase the distance." I'm like, "Oh, come on. There's plenty of room to like at least double the distance of the friggin' signs." And this map or this mod goes way beyond double distance. It's probably like five or ten times the distance. I guess I'm speeding here. I'm speeding at 31, which is what in kilometers? 45? Something like that? 50 maybe. there's a reason at least I know I think in Washington it's the law that for whatever reason you can't have the switch inside the cab it's got to be outside I think that's so you don't fiddle with it when you're driving and accidentally leave it up or or leave it up as some sort of way to save tire wear instead of reducing your pressure on the ground and destroying the road more If the trucks have a often have a switch when you put it in reverse it'll automatically lift them up so they don't bind up when you go backwards which of course isn't a problem in ATS yeah it's been so long since I've played original ATS I can hardly even remember but Seemed like a pretty good upgrade when they did increase the scale. I'm glad they didn't stick with the original scale. Going a little fast here. Yeah, 
yeah, pretty much. I think a lot of trucks have them in, in the cab anyways, just probably hidden. I, I've never seen anybody cheating with it though. It's more like a convenience thing. But probably, I don't know, having to get out of the cab to do it, it's a good chance to check over your straps and stuff like that anyways. Here is the, the police checkpoint where you get charged. I need to swap out that brake sound. SCS did lately, but they made the the AI trucks way underpowered for on the hills. Like I can be one of my trucks at 88,000 pounds with 370 horsepower and just smoke these guys on the hills. So I'm guessing these are supposed to be these are supposed to represent corrupt cops. That's odd, I didn't get charged that time either. I've been charged there. Maybe it's only when you go the other way, but I swear it was both ways. sign here. Plenty of warning. See if that guy has to stop. Right, let us know if we get to go soon. So you a good sign. Be cool if they actually implemented uh, flaggers instead. I mean, I know these stoplight systems exist, but not nearly as common as people out here with stop signs. dynamic based on traffic that actually shows up so if you know you show up to it and there's no opposing traffic it automatically changes the flags for you to go through so you're not sitting at a timer no. drive off the road while I'm reading the stream chat hey thanks new wall have a good one
Thanks for watching. If uh, you can still hear me, um, this will be uploaded if you, for whatever reason, wanted to see the end of it. I'm, I don't think I'm too far away from my destination. That's where I'm going to cut it off. It's been a decent amount of time to do this run. I'm going to give it the full send here. This is so stupid. Yep. Damn it. Normally you can get away with it. There's so little traffic. AI trucks almost ruin this map because they're so freaking slow. slows down for the speed bumps. I just slow down. Freaking stop. It's asinine. You ever notice that weird physics thing when you hit a bump the truck accelerates faster? If you didn't notice it before you'll notice it now. Uh, GTA 5 has a similar quirk. You hit bumps and the cars go faster. I haven't figured out why sometimes I drop frames, otherwise I do the whole stream without a single drop frame. Maybe I was running too high a bitrate before. Kind of like doing the streams, even I don't get that many people watching, but it's a lot easier than uploading it after the fact. The live engagement with the chat is pretty cool.
Yeah, man. Uh, decent headset with a mic isn't too horribly expensive, or just a standalone mic. I can imagine I've seen your videos and there's a lot of text going on. I don't even have any editing software at this point. I just, when I record something, I kind of start it right where I want to and end it and then I just upload it. I need to figure out something for editing again. I assume that's built into Windows 10. My motherboard took a crap on me in the spring and I, it forced me to, you know, to upgrade. And at that point, the, I think the 8 series, but definitely the 9000 series Intel processors basically require Windows 10, so I had to upgrade, lost a bunch of my stuff. see if it's decent enough to at least kind of cut stuff up sometimes when I need to. Thankfully, I, I, you know, the only, I was able to, you know, back up everything that I w wanted to. It's just the crap that I forgot to back up. But the processor was a nice upgrade. I just didn't want to have to do it then. Yeah, the biggest thing I lost was my 
the most time consuming thing that I lost was my voice attack profile for Digital Combat Simulator. I had taken a bunch of time and gotten a ton of stuff in there for all the voice activated commands. And just completely spaced on backing that up. That was really my the only thing I can really remember that I forgot other than the, that the editing program I had that was like a it was free at one point and then they started charging for it but I had the old free version trucks faster or more powerful or whatever. So apparently they all have about 175 horsepower according to SCS. Thanks, Simulator. Thanks for watching. Basically, I'm almost done here once I get to the drop off. Oh, that was a big bump I didn't see. I don't ever really remember having my doors blown off that much by the AI trucks that people complained about it like they did. it up. I remember putting a set of B trains in here was a nightmare. I don't remember if I've done it with this setup, I think I have. 
This is a lot easier than a B-Train. It's going to require at least one pull-up since I'm 90 to the trailer now. I was this close over here. I gotta approach this totally different. Or that little love tap back there. I don't think this is going to be good enough. Need to hug this side a lot more. Get it started earlier. Uh, have you looked at the dev files to see how heavy the trucks actually are, Jay? There we go. So I've never paid attention to that. Yeah, typically a set of doubles is that heavy. Typically kind of low density type stuff. Let's see if we actually made any money. Probably not. She did. We're only seven hours late, apparently. See if there's any loads out of here that I want to haul. Oh, gotcha, yeah. And nothing I really care about. I like the, the coils and the steel tubing loads. The, the stupid pressure tanks, those are kind of lame. But 
Anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna call that it for the stream. So had some good had some good engagement this time. So thanks for watching, guys.